Hello, my name is Bill Kinney and this is part 15 of Quick Precalculus Review for Calculus. It's also part 1 of Unit 2. What was Unit 1? Unit 1 was titled Comparing and Contrasting Linear and Exponential Functions. Unit 2 has perhaps the most long-winded name you've ever seen, but I think it's worthwhile to put these things together. It's titled Inverse Functions, Power Functions, Logarithmic Functions, and Alternative Representations of exponential functions dot 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 including the use of the special number e. It's very special in math like pi is special. Okay? Yes, very long-winded, but I think it's worthwhile to put these together, especially through the use of one main type of example, use and analysis of the compound interest formula for bank accounts when you make a deposit and let the money sit there. We're going to think about all these ideas in the context of that formula. But in this part one of unit two, we're going to keep it pretty simple. We're going to do a basic compound interest formula problem where we know the initial deposit and we want to find what's called the future value or accumulated balance of the account, or also where we know what we want to have in the account after a certain number of years and figure out the present value, the principal, that we should deposit initially to get that future value after a certain amount of time, and finally to approximate something called the doubling time of the account. We're doing everything that we see here in a computer program called Mathematica. That's what you see. In parts 1 through 14, you know, if you watch them, that I use Mathematica in some pretty fancy ways. And I will do that here in this unit as well. Though in part 1 here of this unit, I'm going to be pretty basic. Essentially, just use Mathematica as a calculator. Here is the compound interest formula in all its glory. I'm not going to bother deriving this formula ever here in this series. I'm assuming you've probably seen it before, and hopefully you've seen its derivation before. It does make good logical sense if you do some examples. P represents the principal, present value, the initial deposit, what you put in the account right away. T is the amount of time you leave it there, typically in years, and basically that's going to be the assumption here. If T is measured in years, then R is going to be an annual interest rate but it's going to be compounded a certain number of times per year. N is the compound number of compounding periods per year if T is in years. All right. Oftentimes banks, savings accounts, are compounded four times a year. N is four. That means every three months that's when they give you your interest. All right. We're going to use the formula and find in part A of, of the problem, we're going to find the value of A, the accumulated balance here. And here is the example. Titled example 2.1 because it's unit 2 example 1. Back in unit 1 I only I had four main examples. I should have titled them examples 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, and 1.4. I didn't. Oh well. This is example 2.1. A little history to start off with. Back in the early 80s when I was young, some savings accounts, if you can believe it, had annual interest rates as high as 8% compounded quarterly. I had such a savings account, though the interest rate didn't stay constant at 8%. We are going to pretend it stays constant here. There was a downside to life back then. Interest rates on home loans, mortgages, got as high as 18%, if you can believe it, compounded monthly. So that was a downside. Another thing was that inflation was kind of out of control, mid-70s through early 80s. The prices were going up of lots of things. Another way to look at that is the value of the dollar was going down very rapidly. Here in this problem, we are going to assume the interest rate stays constant, even though that doesn't typically happen with savings accounts. Three things to do. First, use the compound interest formula to find out how much an initial deposit of $1,000 will grow to after 10 years. Next, use it to figure out how much you should deposit right now, so to speak, if we were back in the 80s, to make the account grow to a future value of $10,000 after 10 years. And finally, approximate the doubling time of this account. I've started to type out the solutions down here. Let's zoom in a bit here. Here's the start for part A. Um, P is 1,000. R is 8%, which you type in as 0 0.08. 8% literally means 8 per 100, or 8 hundredths, which is 0 0.08, and you want to write it in the formula like that. N is 4, 4 periods per year every, every 3 months. T time is 10 years. Okay. The first thing you should do when you look at this formula is you should work in the inside of the parentheses first and do the division before the addition. 0 0.08 divided by 4 is 0 0.02. Actually, that means an 8% annual rate is equivalent to a 2% uh, quarterly rate. So we get a 1.02 when we do that. 
We also want to figure out what the power is. 4 times 10 is 40. Write it this way. Next, go ahead and approximate this. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and approximate it on Mathematica. I'm about to do that. You can use your calculator, though I will mention you want to pay attention here. When I've got this stuff here, that is in text mode. If I go to the cell over here and look in format style, I will see it's in text mode. If I want Mathematica to do math, I want to click between the cells here until I see a horizontal line. That tells me Mathematica is ready to do math. And for example, 1.202 to the 40th power is about 2.20804. Multiply that by a thousand at the end, you get about two thousand two hundred eight dollars and four cents as the answer for part A. Let's make that a different color here. Oops, lost my highlight. There we go, there's the answer. Before we go into the next part, I want to show you there's another way this can be done in Mathematica that's a little more complicated but is more worthwhile in the long run to learn. Just as with any com uh, computer programming language, you can define variables in Mathematica. For example, I can say p is a thousand. Now, if I just type a p and enter that, I'll get it spit back a p itself. There's nothing, no value in for p yet. But if I say p equals a thousand, watch this, not only will the p turn black, from blue to black, watch, ready, go, but also I see a thousand, and I also, if I type p and enter it, I will see a thousand is stored in it. So I can get values into variables. p is the principal, r equals 0 0.08 is the interest rate, n is 4, t is 10. I can type all that out. The semicolons, by the way, just suppress output. I don't have to have them if I put these things on different lines, but I like doing them. So all those values are now stored in Mathematica, t is 10, for example. And now I can also find the value of a by typing the formula in like this. Which brings up another Mathematica point. If I want to have n times t up here like I have, I do need to either put a star there or have a space between the n and the t. If I just put the n and the t next to each other like I wrote by hand or by typing, uh, that's a problem because Mathematica doesn't know what the variable n t is. It thinks of this as one variable. If you put a space between them or as a default put a star, it will multiply them and do the right thing. All right. So the answer there is 2208.04. Part B, how much should you deposit right now to grow to $10,000 after 10 years? So now we know A is 10,000, but we don't know P. As it stands, the initial writing of the compound interest formula like this, if you think of R, N, and T as being fixed, gives us A as a function of P, the accumulated balance as a function of the principal. The idea of an inverse function is you want to solve for the other variable. I'd like to see if this equation also defines p as a function of a. And it does. It's pretty simple to solve for in this case. Just divide both sides by 1 plus r over n to the nt power to get this equation. Again, thinking of r, n, and t as fixed, this equation defines p as a function of a. And I can use it to solve part b. Before I do that, let me also remark that I can write it in an alternative form. I can think of the fraction as being a times um, 1 plus r over n to the negative nt power. That's the definition of negative exponent. So I can write it that way, and I can use the formula now. I'm going to have to clear out the value of p. p still is 1,000, but if I type clear p, now p will not have a value. You can see it's blue. Um, a, I can redefine to be the $10,000. I'm keeping R, N, and T the same, 0 0.08, 4, and 10. So now I can just type P equals A times 1 plus R over N to the negative N times T power. And actually, I wouldn't have to say P equals this, but I'm doing it just because I want to. And now this value is stored in P. Also would be good, before I go into part C, to realize we could have guessed that the answer would, be, would have been less than 5000 here. We saw in part A that $1,000 over 10 years in this account more than doubled. And that's going to be the same no matter what your starting deposit is. No matter what your starting deposit is in this account, over 10 years it will more than double. So since I want to get $10,000 in part B at the end, and since the money more than doubles over 10 years, the answer here has to be less than 5000 and it is. But what is the doubling time? What should t be so that when you use the formula, the original formula, you get 2 times p? It doesn't matter what you pick for p. Let me go back to something simpler like p equals 1,000. 
let's figure out p times 1 plus r over n to the n times t power where we pick different things for t. Now I need to experiment here to figure out the doubling time. Actually it's possible to solve for doubling time without experimenting. You can use logarithms but we aren't there yet. Okay, I know it's got to be less than 10. What if you try 8? Okay, did p double? No, it's, it's too small. All right, so it's got to be an answer bigger than 8. Try 9. Okay, that more than doubled, so it's got to be between 8 and 9. Try 8.8. .8. That's pretty close. Try 8.75, getting really close. 8.77, too big, 755 perhaps. So we're getting close. Closer, closer, closer. Almost there. There we go, close enough. <clears throat> That would be the answer for part C, approximately. Round it, go ahead and round it. Approximately 8.75 years to double. It doesn't matter what P is. In fact, I'll show you it doesn't matter what P is. If I pick P equal to 2,000, 2,000 will approximately double over that same amount of time. Eight and three quarters years, eight years and nine months would be the approximate doubling time for this account. Okay? Think about all this. Think about especially this idea of an inverse function, and we'll get back to that in the next video.